Hello again, this is Murray, or the Pie Man, or occasionally Purry, um, coming to you with another edition of my walkthrough of Real Mist. Um, a slight change in format, what I was looking at the last one, and what I decided to do was um, basically change the way I do it. So I'm going to start off by reading the book of the age we're about to visit. I'll then solve the puzzle on the island, and then I'll go into the age and actually do the puzzles in there as well, so it kind of ties everything together rather than having me sort of stopping halfway through. It does mean I'll be starting doing the bedtime story a bit, so let's find the book. We're going to go to the mechanical age. Uh, so, are you sitting comfortably? Uh, then we'll begin. Just gonna have a close to the bookshelf. Before arriving in this age, I was determined that it would be a journey, journey to a world very different from my previous adventures, and it was. The sky here is dark and grey, and incessantly displays flashes of lightning in the distance. I met a very old man with a long beard and hair that hangs to his waist. He is very feeble, and has trouble even moving. This man has obviously been through many things in this strange world, and I have learned many things from him. He has told me an interesting story of this world's history. Years ago he told me there was a beautiful city that rose up out of the water. It housed many people inside its walls, and the people had everything they wished for. The city was surrounded by three high hills which rose higher than the city. On the east hill of the city rested a large lookout post. The people of the city had constructed the post, expecting visitors to arrive from the east. The people had no means of travelling in the water, which forced them to merely wait for friend or foe. As time has passed, friendly visitors brought rumours of an enemy that existed beyond the horizon. The people grew fearful, yet nothing happened. On the day the usually sunny sky became dark as night and black ships appeared in the horizon, the lookout post's attempts at peace were turned away, and the sentries there easily overwhelmed. The ships continued to wreak havoc in the city, apparently destroying everyone and everything. After the foundations of the city were destroyed, the city sunk deep into the ocean, and only the lookout post remained. The black ships sailed away. The man continued to say that eight people had hidden and managed to survive through the attack. In the nine years since the attack, two of the survivors had died. He also said that it was rumoured that ten years from the attack the enemy would return to finish the destruction they had started so long ago. I have decided, since hearing the man's story, it would be admirable to save this civilization and stop the enemy's plan of destruction. I am excited about the adventure that awaits me, and the idea has sparked my mind to provide the needed defence for these people. I met the remaining survivors today, and I've begun work on a plan for protection. There's a little technical diagram. After a short absence, I've returned to this age with my two sons. They have, as, as of yet, travelled rarely with me, and they are understandably excited to be here. They have grown considerably since Everdunes, and it is already obvious to me that they will be a great help this time, instead of the nuisance they have been in the past. All three of us, along with four of the healthier survivors, began construction today. We are building upon the old city's ruins, which will provide the perfect foundation for our fortress. My sons have been spending much of their spare time in the South Island, where most of my materials are stored. I am very pleased with their intelligence and their creativity is refreshing to see, as they work on some small projects of their own, like a handy staircase. It has been over four months now, and the construction is going well. My sons love the world except for the grey sky. They detest the grey sky, and tell me many times they wish the sky here were like the blue sky in mist. The old man I first talked to tells me that the enemy is due in four months. I fear we will be ready when the time comes. The man reminds me of Emmett in many ways. I often wonder how Emmett and his people are doing. We will hear of Emmett later. It has been six months of work and we have finally finished the fortress. It rests between the three hills which are now only islands due to a rising water level that the people experienced after the attack. Inside the fortress, I have designed a most intriguing device. It makes use of a technology called holography. Or holography. I have begun experimenting with it on my visits to Aspermere. It will be working in a couple of days after I compensate for some small miscalculations. This holographic device will enable the survivors to use the fortress. And he's showing there there's a lever for power and a lever for the track slope. We shall again find out about that later. The enemy is due to come soon, and I trust the fortress will provide significant protection for all of us. 
and there's a diagram of a fortress which we will hopefully be seeing shortly. The black ships have come. Their attack was substantial, their weapons have stopped and it appears they've turned away in defeat. I could not help but smile as I watched the boats leave. And there's the black ships insignia. Last night we held a small celebration and the old survivors danced their dances of old. Old dances of old, I might as well overdo the old. My sons did not understand why the sky had not turned back to its original blue. The old man told them that the storms would never end until the enemy was destroyed. I assured my sons that a blue sky was not worth the risk of death, and they seemed to hear me. I have had a healthy adventure and begun to work on a new book. Once again, I must leave a familiar age in search of a new universe. I have begun. But first, I will have an extended time with Catherine, whom I miss very much. I must also return to the people of the tide. I believe in my travels I have found a substance that will ease the pain of their bone ailments that they have long endured. I hope to return to mechanical age one day to find the population growing and my fortress still strong. Though the sky may always be black, I am confident the people here feel a heavier darkness has been lifted from their shoulders. So there's a little bit of background colour for this age. And we will now go over to the next step, which as always is our map with all the locations marked on it. There we go. So, the mechanical age is based, as you'd expect, in these big gear wheels. So we'll let those turn, and we'll open the not-so-secret compartment. Very spiffy. I actually always find that rather neat. I did like the secret compartment. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go up here, and we're going to safety first, close the door, go up to the turret. I wonder if the glitch that we saw in Channel Wood is going to still be present or if it's uh, going to have cleared itself up. I can see sky there but then I think I could, so this should show you that the book that we're going for is in the gears. So that's what we should have seen the tree in Channel Wood. So back down the ladder, don't twist the ankle. Now I am trying some different recording software and I actually also have a new mic so I do apologise if there are sound um, or um, picture quality problems but I am trying to improve them. So there you go, 240 and 221. Now there is only one timepiece that we can see on the island and that is of course the clock that we see, the, in fact the only thing that doesn't have is marker switch switched. So close that, and we're going to drop back down and get out, so 240, 221, two combinations. As you can see, things are growing a little bit more complicated. So we'll walk back through our nice wood panelled secret passage, and we'll open the door. There we go. Again, something you would never actually see in the original version of Mist would be that door opening, because um, it was just wasn't animated. So, if we come down here, you can see the two gear wheels. I think the big one for the big hand. So, take that to 40. And the little one for the little hand. Then we shall press the button. And up from the ground spins. Gear wheels. Of course it's gear wheels. Actress knows a theme when he sees one. So we'll cross this. We might as well flick the marker switch so we've got the full set. And we will go into this room where we have a combination lock. And here we have to get to two, two, and one. So if I remember this one. Ah, yes. So that should mean. If I remember, if I pull that. I've done it wrong. Yep. We're going to pull the reset lever. So we pull this once. We pull this. We hold it on the second one. some ominous music. 
so we have unlocked another book. So we will now have to run the length of the island. And uh, I couldn't do this in real life. Uh, not being a particularly fit person, I don't think I'd actually make it this far. So, as we can now see, that gear wheel that we nipped up to flick the marker switch is now open. And so this will take us to the mechanical age. The upshot of this age is it's actually quite sm short. So, uh, there's not too much to go through in getting to and from. So, there you go, there's that fortress that you saw. The small island, all that remains of the lookout post by the looks of things. And again, through the lore of the game there will be a book hidden here that we have to retrieve, so we basically have to find a combination and retrieve a book. Uh, not much trouble to do really. And I think that's just going to zoom round and round, yep, the three islands. So, let us experience the mechanical age. Um, yes, like I say, this is one of the shortest ones. So, almost look, seems like we haven't gone anywhere up until we look around and instead of standing there we're on this uh, little outcrop. And as you can see here we have the combination lock which will open up, I don't think it spoils too much to say this will open up the way to get it. Uh, you, know, you can see, it's not actually that clear there but you could see. Uh, now one of the things that's notable here is that the skies aren't the grey thundery ones you were told which hints that the back ships may have been defeated at some point in the future. But how? And here's the fortress, Atrus's Impenetrable Fortress. Um, rather nice. So, once again, we're going to see a room for both the boys. Apparently in everything he didn't build gun emplacements. And again, this was something like real contrast to what we saw in Channel Wood, with all its uh, wooden nature. We've now got these uh, very modern looking, or at least uh, 20th century looking steel walls with the, the sort of pattern plate and that sort of thing. So in here we have a room. Um, a lovely portrait, not King Joffrey. A picture of some hills and some... Now, if I remember, this isn't actually a puzzle, it's just a... I do sometimes wonder, there's wee things like that, and I do sometimes wonder if we're seeing, um... kind of the remains of Puzzles Pass, and there's some hints at uh, Mist here as well. Now, I don't know if that woman's maybe Catherine. I actually can't remember. You do see her in a later game. Um, and yeah, we have the rocket and the boat there, and a model of the clock as well, which I thought was quite fitting. And there's a telescope, so we can definitely see that the sky is now blue, but that's pretty much been looked out. And you would think there's a little mechanical... Whoa, sorry. Sorry about anyone with motion sickness. Controls seem to be playing up today. Uh, right. We can turn this little handle. And he's got a little clockwork bird. But just behind there, you can maybe just see a panel. So there's a secret compartment. Which we can get into. And it's looks like it's someone's wine cellar. I've got some boxes, look like they're filled with coins. And here's the red page, so this is probably Cyrus's room. Bars of gold and a rolled up scroll of paper there. So we will work out our way out here and take this page back. So Cyrus, your greed sickens me. Your desire for wealth and plunder in is never satisfied. I will instruct my subjects not to pay you new tax, and you know they'll listen to me. Regards, Akinar. So they're having a fallout, apparently. Cyrus has been overtaking them, overtaxing them, and Akinar is saying no more. So, again, this thought that Cyrus maybe saw these ages as a kind of opportunity for theft and plunder is, um, is very much there. Um, so... What we will do is, now in here, we have what looks like a lift. And I did walk past a big red button, don't worry, anyone's screaming, you walk past a big red button. I know. Um, so, it's a nice, different looking lift, it's metallic. And I think I actually have to press the red button to call the lift. So, we'll head back for the moment, because I want to approach this later. Ah, oh, no. That's what it says. That's the stairway down, so we're not wanting to go in there just yet. If I remember right. Oh no, we do have to switch this on, so. Back where I was, and again, I do like these. This is very much as fitting to the mechanical age. This is very much a. Um, sort of. Yeah, because we've got 
have to turn the lift around. Again, a defensive feature. Do that there. But yes, it's very much looking much more modern and powered. You can see that uh, everything we've seen so far does seem to hint that there is a varying level of technology, so I can press that. And now we have access to a lift. And that lift, if I remember, can take me. So it's an up and a down button, so we'll press the up button. Oh, almost seems like a Star Trek turbo button. This takes me to an upstairs area. Now, it doesn't seem to be much here, but we'll go to this later. It does make sense because it's something to do with that middle one. For the moment, because as you can see, you can't go any further down, so it's a simple up down. So we will go through to see Akinar's room. And he is either a huge Fifty Shades fan or he is clearly not a nice person. So there's some sort of curtain there. A horrible curtain at that. If nothing else told you bad things about him, it's that. There are various weapons. Now, you could be a warrior, you could be someone who fights. He's got a fun little box here. The other guy had a clockwork thing, but no, this one's got. Oh! A pop up poisonous snake. How lovely. Got crossbows, maces, chains hanging from the ceiling. A very sparse throne. Again, we did see that, but some sort of helmet. But then again, we could take that as he's to fight off, um, you know, he's been fighting people off, and maybe that's why the subjects listen to him. Because unlike Akinar, who's just taxing them, he's a hero, you know, he's helped them until they come in here. And he has various jars of poisons. There's our blue page, which we'll come back and pick up. In the box, there appears to be, yeah, that looks like a head. It might be. I'm going to hope it's a mask. But it might well be the head of something. Um, a chopping block with blood on, lovely. And a cage, which has a switch on the side. This electrifies the cage, so... Again, we're seeing signs that maybe Akinar, if you remember his room in Channelwood, had a lot of stuff painting out to be a god. There is one point of interest here, though. It has to do with Atrus' interest in holography which is Fortress Rotation Simulator. So we need to know this because the Fortress Rotation is based on sound. So as you can see we've got a diagram of the Fortress, it has four points. So first we've got to power it up and then we try to get it rotating past the point. It's about oh, too far maybe. If I remember if I click that <laughs> So that's a kind of hiss, is the first point, that's what we're looking for. The second point is a ping. And the third point, it's about a three second pull, is a sproing. So hiss, ping, sproing, and the point that we're at at the moment Is a, kind of like a tin being hit. So, if I can remember all that, I really should bring a notebook. I do say this like every time I record. That's not rotated the fortress at all at the moment. But, if we go back to the lift that we came into, what we will find, now this is the trick, this is actually where the middle button comes in handy. So, if I Button. It takes us up. So that goes up. That starts the timer. But we can now. Oh, so now we have the actual fortress rotation mechanism. So. That sounds like we got it. And that button calls lift back. Let's go and see the first point that we've reached. We 
because on each of these points is the combination. So this first one, I think this might be the old lookout post. Maybe we could take a little wander out. All the way up. On this little pedestal are two symbols, which I shall quickly take a note of, i.e. a photograph. Right, so that one was the hiss. I think we've still got a ping, a sproing, and a kind of tin being hit sound to go. And again, you can see, I think that's the point we came in at. Yep, that's the point we're going to. And actually, I think I want to miss the third point, because there's nothing there. But I'll go point by point, because it's the easiest way to keep track. So... Run through as quickly as I can. Back into the lift. Again, the downside with missed um, gameplay mechanics because there's an awful lot of going back and forth, which uh, does get a lot of while. Um, like I say, this stage in particular has the least backing and forthing of them all, and it's still got quite a lot. But hopefully, not so much as to be annoying. Uh, there is a worth stage for this. Sounds right. I'm going to see if I can miss the third platform entirely when we come back. Uh, so, yes. Um, one of the things I would actually like to talk about a little at the start is one of the reasons why I think missed, even if you don't like the game, is still important. Um, now, it wasn't the first game to do I don't think it was the first game to do puzzles in first person, but it was the first one to really start perfecting it. What I will say is other games have done it better since then, but Myst is definitely in their DNA. Uh, one of those ones, for example, things like... There's a photo of the other two bits of combination. Games like, for example, if you go right to the modern ones which all get accused of walking sims, of which Myst also gets that accusation of walking sim. Um, games like Her Story. Um, now, Her Story is a much, much better example of a game. You can actually see uh, Geek Planet Line, if you go for that, do a very good walkthrough of it. Um, and that's actually getting into the proper realm of which I think Mist was attempting of telling a story through a game, rather than necessarily making it a, a skill. And of course they've kept puzzles in and that sort of thing. But there are other ones, such as uh, the Dark Fall series, um, of which I might try, if um, I do get time, I might try to record a bit of one of the Dark Fall games for... Um, Halloween, uh, because uh, they're quite good as a sort of spooky game. Right, back to the controls here. So, so that was the sprung, and then that sounds like I might have got us back. One go. So yeah, the Dark Fall game. Uh, it's actually very similar to the original Mist, only uh, it's got a horror theme, so they really do use this same thing to build up atmosphere. And again, it's why, why quite frankly, I say I'm playing Mist so you don't have to. Um, I can understand people not enjoying this. Uh, like I say, I got firmly involved in the world and uh, kind of taken away by it so much that I've stuck with this through. Uh, let's see, we have four sequels plus a kind of spin off game. Um, so yeah, I stuck with it through all that. Now, here's our diagram. And so, we had a kind of loop thing there, a set of zigzags. I don't know why he doesn't ever use a combination code. He does like his little pictographs and that sort of thing, does Atris. Um, very odd chap. But it's almost like he's just built puzzles rather than a proper security code. So if I press that, because it like I say, I was so disgusted by the descending steps that I turned away. So this will get us back to Mist. We have our pink page. And the upshot, unlike Channelwood, where we had to do uh, quite a bit of travelling to and from to get uh, back to um, Mist and whatnot, this will be a fairly quick uh, knit back and forth. So we'll put this page in the book. And then hopefully... Once I've stopped... I always like the idea that I've landed on my back here. Uh, basically that I keep falling onto. Whenever you land you just get dropped straight onto your back, back in the library. So. 
have returned. Additional page. Leave from my prison on this forgotten island of mist. I see that you are. I am called Sears. All the red pages. I know. Must search and bring me two more for the red. I am released. I promise. Don't touch the blue pages. That is where my for my wicked brother. Distorted mind and senses. He disgusts me. Do not release Akna. Thirst for destruction is not. Never ending. Bring the red paint. You please. From this prison, I promise you will be greatly rewarded. You must, must help. help. So, nothing there is uh, really not confirming what we've seen in the ages already. Um, he's he's definitely trying to play us up, uh, play up to greed. And uh, he has pointed out that Akinar is twisted and bloodthirsty. Now, like I say, it could be that he's seen a bit too much and snapped. Or perhaps uh, that that's a kind of distortion again. We don't know who got to leave these places in the last state. And for all we know, Cirrus had all the torture equipment and shifted it into Akinar's secret hidey hole. Doubtful, I know. So yes, uh, what I do like about the Missy is that I do feel that there's quite a few very good games which do owe it a kind of lineage. For all that this initial iteration was actually quite rough, um, particularly with its repetitive gameplay. Like I say, I can't believe that they never thought someone would want to get both all the red and blue pages. And there's a particularly annoying uh, stage in uh, one of the later ages where there's a very long-winded puzzle which you have to complete to get out. And uh, that might be one where uh, I might even either find something substantial to talk about, um, which is entirely possible, entirely possible, or I'll uh, find out how to ramp things up and double time them so that I can uh, quickly run us through that sequence again. I might even just skip it. Uh, I'll do it myself and skip it out, because uh, when it takes you that long to get out this age, I think that's where things get a bit annoying. Yep, I've definitely got the page. I need to come back and have the page on record. That would be embarrassing. So yes, that's really just been me. There's not been much to talk about here. This is uh, one of the easier stages to complete, and it's quite full of what you're doing. There's uh, a fair few puzzles involved, so it's uh, mostly been me talking about what I'm actually doing in the game. Yep, get up. And finally, let's see what Akinar has to say. Let's see if he can defend his brother's accusations. Ah, good. Still more blue pages you find. Bring more. I must have some more. That's all I ask of you. <laughs> long. It's so long since my brother, Cirrus, wrongfully imprisoned me within this book. Stupid schemes. <laughs> Pretty speech. Greed, which is endless. Perfectly obvious to you. He's done evil and he has destroyed all before. Do not bring the red pages to him. Not let him trick you. He tricked our father. Hideously murdered our father. He tricked you. Murder you. Touch the red pages. 
take you to bring the blue pages. To me. Listen, you must obey me. Blue pages are my only hope. You must help, help me. me. You must help, help me. me. So that's his kind of rebuttal that uh, it was in fact Akinar who destroyed everything. So what I'm going to do is leave it here. Um, as always, thank you if you've been watching, and particularly if you've been watching all of them. Um, I hope you've been enjoying them. Uh, please continue. Thank you if you just come. There are two other videos where I cover the intro and the channel wood age. Um, so who do you think's uh, responsible for the destruction of Mist and the possible murder of Atris? That's the first time we've heard that that may have happened. Um, is it Cirrus? Is it Akinar? Um, if you'd like to leave comments, please do. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to check in on those. And as always, do please like and share this video if you enjoy it. Um, so with that, I'll hopefully be back in a month or so's time to share another video. Until then, bye for now.